Hey guys, welcome to the Wild Side, and this week we're talking all about this cute creature from South America. What is it? Well, let's walk on the wild side of the Kinkajou. This is Milo, a kinkajou, native to South Mexico, Central America, and South America. Now, this animal right here is classified as a carnivore, it's typically known as the honey bear. Uh, and by the locals in Belize, they actually have a word for them that means the night walker. They primarily come out at night. Now, what are they looking for? Well, at night, they're trying to avoid their predators. Harpy eagles, anacondas, jaguars, they would love to take a bite out of a kinkajou. Now these animals have a prehensile tail. Look at this. Now they use this prehensile tail, much like a monkey would, to hang onto tree branches while they move through the forest tops. Now a kinkajou doesn't typically come down from the treetops very often. In fact, if they need to go from one tree to another tree, they just use connecting branches in those larger trees up in the canopy. That's the high part of the rainforest. Now while they are up in the treetops, they're looking for fruit, they're looking for flowers, and they're looking for beehives. Why beehives? Because they can't beehive when they're near a beehive. They love to lick the honey out of those beehives. They have a long probing tongue, which gives them the name locally as the honey bear. They'll probe beehives, probe flowers, looking for the food that they find the most yummy. You could say a kinkajou has a bit of a sweet tooth. Now look at how they move. See how they put their front legs and their back legs, they're very precise in their movements. That prehensile tail here is used for balance. They can actually move as fast backward as they can forward. Now look at these feet. These feet right here can actually rotate around. And these animals can run down the front of a tree or up a tree at the same exact speed. They can rotate their hind feet around kind of like the front feet. It's the same position. So they can control themselves as they're going up and down into the canopy and back down to the middle parts of the tree to find fruit and honey. Now these animals are nocturnal, which means they move around and look for food at night. However, they are very, very safe during the day. Oh, here we go. Yep, all right. Here we go. You wanna see that? Now they like to get in the, the hollows of trees. <laughs> now they like to hollow out in trees to stay safe from their predators. So you see right now, he's hollowing into my tree branch and it looks like I'm really buff, doesn't it? He's all up in there now. Yep, here we go. Oh, he's coming back out. He's coming back out. Yeah, there he is. How fun is that? Oh, no, back down there. Okay, yep. Yeah, you want to give me a nice back scratch? Oh, here he is. This is Milo, everyone. Now, this animal is closely related to the raccoon, the kudamundi, or the kawadi. Look at this. They have a very, very good sense of hearing, too. Did you know? You probably didn't. They have a very good sense of hearing. Their hearing is so precise, they can hear a snake slithering, slithering in the underbrush, in the undergrowth, and stay safe and avoid that predator. They also have some pretty good eyesight, but their eyesight is mainly tuned for seeing at night. Now, their best sense is something that we don't have. They have, well, not their best sense. Their best ability is something that we don't have. Check this out, this prehensile tail. In fact, they're one of only two predatory animals that have a prehensile tail. The other being that of the binturong. The binturong is this animal that smells like popcorn. But they use their tail, just like a third limb, like he's doing right now, to grab onto tree branches because they live up so high in the tops of trees. Now, this creature right here is in the rainforest, which is an endangered portion of our world. We lose a football field length of rainforest each hour that ticks by on planet Earth. How can we help? We can reduce what we use, we can recycle, and we can make sure that we protect these animals' habitat for many, many years to come. Now, the kinkajou is not an endangered species. However, its habitat is. And a lot of more of uh, this animal is being used because people think they make very good pets, which clearly they don't. Hey guys, if you like learning about the cutest animal you've probably never heard of, please click subscribe right here on YouTube. And if you'd like to learn more about these animals, Please leave a comment below. I'd love to tell you more about the amazing prehensile tailed kinkajou and their environment and what makes these animals so special. Please also head over to our social media channels, like and follow the Wild Side with Clay. And if you would please head over to Zoo Imagination's website, find them on social media and love them as well. For now, I guess we're gonna be tucking in for the night. Stay wild, 
conservation rules, and we'll see you next week when we highlight yet another of your favorite species. Until then, I've got to go see a guy about a kinkajou. Bye, everybody.